A federal high court in Yenagua Bialsa state has sentenced one Yunusa Dahiru to 26 years in prison for kidnapping Ese Ururu, then a teenager. The police had, in March 2016, arraigned Dahiru on a five-count charge bordering on abduction, kidnapping, and unlawful carnal knowledge and sexual exploitation of Ese, who was 14 years old at the time. Delivering the judgment on Thursday, Jane Eyang, the judge, found Dahiru guilty on four out of five of the charges preferred against him. On count one, he was found not guilty. Count two, he got a five-year sentence. On count three, he got seven years. And on count four, seven years. The judge held that the sentences would run concurrently. This means the convict will only spend seven years in prison. Speaking after the matter became public, Bala Dahiru, Yinusa's father declared that there was no marriage between his son and Ese because it would have been illegal. I'm not comfortable with the part of the judgment that said the sentence should run consecutively. That's the only aspect I'm not comfortable with. Though we had some challenges during the course of the trial, there are six other witnesses we needed to have called in this matter. Two of them residents here. Four of them in Kano, but none of them was available. The very little girl kidnapped out of uh, Bayasa State came in, 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 in a, a, I would like to say, a battered situation because she came in with pregnancy, a very little girl. And so we said that justice must be done in this case. That is why we followed this case of Abuja Owere, and at the end of the day, Today, the justice we are seeking for has been done. My message for pedophiles out there is that, um, you know, um, it's to serve as a serious deterrence to perpetrators out there. And um, justice was fair enough in this matter. This case is really, we serve a deterrent to others who have been trafficking people's children. And uh, I thank God that the truth has prevailed today. I thank God. And my family, we are very happy. Joining us to discuss this judgment is Project Coordinator, Women Rights Action Aid, Vivian FM Bassi. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'm glad to be here. All right, quickly, what's your reaction to this judgment? How important is it? Okay, first and foremost, it was exciting to hear the news that, this, that the case was still alive and that a judgment had been carried out. You know, it came across as, so judgment delayed is no longer judgment denied. It took a while, but we've, we've, we've eventually gotten somewhere. Now, not everybody is comfortable with the sentence, sentence in itself being that it's going to run consecutively and thereby giving him less time, you know, in prison. However, it's a start, and we are excited that a precedent has been set. It's a message out there to pedophiles. There are a lot of cases that are ongoing, that have dragged for years, and people have lost hope. So I guess this has sort of reignited hope. There are a lot of cases of um, child defilement, rape, molestation of both girls and boys. And this case has brought it to the fore that we can actually get verdict. Perpetrators can actually be brought to book. Uh, some would but say, some, is, some would react and, and say, this, this is the just... Perspective of, hello? Yeah, I was trying to interject to say some would, um, okay. um, uh, on the pessimistic side, say this is just one. It's like um, a, a spoon from a, a huge pool of um, incest that, you know, currently, not yeah, incest, that, yeah, um, rape headed. and abuse of minor. So it's not so much of a celebration because there are still so many victims out there who have been denied justice. Okay, so I was heading there. It's a drop in the ocean, okay, because a lot of cases yet to be addressed. All I'm saying is it gives those of us in the field, those of us frontliners who get to receive um, the cases up front. So because in action aid, 
We've worked on a child protection project in six states. And every day, you get cases and reports of child molestation, child defilement, and there's as far as the case goes. So the case of SA in 2015 was a big deal. You know, um, there, was a, uh, there was outcry um, on social media. There was a lot of pressure put on the EMEA back then, you know, in Kano. But we thought everything had died down. Okay, do you, do you it believe... Good, it's good to know that Go there was actually something going on even without the knowledge of a lot of people. All right. Um, do you believe that for those who are seeking justice, um, aside yourself and your team and those who have worked on this case, do you see it as something that will allow them be hopeful that their own turn with the justice system will be this fruitful? I think it gives some slight silver of hope. It does give some slight silver of, um, of hope to people. So um, it's just that don't give up, be, per be persistent and push. But then again, how many people have the support that SS Chase garnered? You know, where, how many people cases are on social media? How many people know where to go to to report cases? And their issues will be taken up as far as possible without issues of um, finances causing people to drop cases or um, the police or security personnel are botching cases and things like that. I listened to the last person talk about witnesses that were not available. So issues like this could hamper judgment. All right, Vivian, thank you so, very much for your time. That's all time will permit us on the news. Thank you very much. More grace.